Father's Day to all you fathers and grandfathers and other special men in our lives. I'm honored to be here worshiping with you this morning. I'm thankful that Pastor Nate invited me to come and preach during your time of transition. Um, I'm very happy to be with you and to share God's with word with you today. My name is Reverend Mary Hagley. I am a deacon at Dixboro United Methodist Church, where I primarily work with our children and our youth and our families in the congregation to, to share God's love with them and help them feel loved always. Some of you may rem remember me from VCI, that we all did the VCI phase one together here at your church. And um, so you may, if that why my face looks a little familiar. It's probably because of VCI. Uh, so um, I'm excited to be here with you. And today I, uh, I want to encourage you to be courageous through these difficult times in our society, in our world, and even in the months of this pastoral change that you are undergoing right now. So I'm very honored and privileged to be here with you today. So as we begin, I invite you to open your hearts and minds as we call on the Holy Spirit to speak with us today as we listen to a praise song called Courageous. The song is by Casting Crown and it's written by John Mark Hall and Matthew Rest. West.
Casting Crowns was written for a movie, Courageous, in 2011, which is about a man who endures a terrible personal tragedy in his life and that causes him to ponder his meaning in life. Through his faith, he vows to be a better parent and a follower of Christ as he gathers other men to do the same. Now, just as a disclaimer, I have never seen the movie. However, I've read the reviews and read a little bit about it, but my heart really lies with the song. I absolutely love the song, Courageous. And not only does this song call for men to be courageous disciples who are different from all other generations, I believe it has the same message for all people. The beginning of the song sings, we were made to lead the way. We could be the generation standing unafraid. We were made to be courageous. Isn't that a message for all of us? I recently just finished a book study by Adam Hamilton, and it was called Unafraid, Living with Courage and Hope. And it looked at all of the fears in our lives, from personal ones, to politics, to economic stability, to parenting, to death, to talking about the coronavirus in amongst this study, which was written before the coronavirus was in existence. And the last thing it left us with was the fear of the Lord. Now, one of my personal takeaways is we can live unafraid because God's peace is within us, which doesn't mean that fear is gone, but it does mean fear gives us the strength to move forward. Adam Hamilton says, when we fear God, we revere, respect, and stand in awe of God. We fear everything else a little less. The more we trust in God, the less we fear that anyone or anything else can do to us. The more we rest in God's peace and the more we seek to do God's will. When we live courageous, we find strength. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and strong. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This scripture from Joshua is a pivotal moment in the Israelites' lives. They have been living on the brink of the promised land for 40 years. And now they're about ready to walk into the unknown land. But it's also the promised land God has given them, but it's still very unknown to them. Can you imagine their fears? Who are gonna be these giants that are living in the promised land? How will we survive? Yet God reminds them, I am with you always. Be strong, be courageous. You can do this. I love this scripture because it is a great reminder that God is always with us. So we should live unafraid, standing on the front lines of our lives. We were made to be courageous and we're taking back this fight, our song sings. Maybe you have found yourself living in fear. Your anxiety has got the best of you. You are struggling with all this rapid change that has happened over the th last three months. And now you're in the midst of a pastoral transition. You might be saying, really God? Now this too? It's a lot to handle. And sometimes when we're in the midst of change, we have to face the fear. We can examine our fears in light of the facts. Let's, you know, fact check our fears. What's the truth behind them? The next time we 
the next step we come to with an, is an action plan. We come up with something that can help us do better in facing our fears. This might mean t talking to a trusted friend, or it might be seeking, professional, seeking a professional therapist. And fourth, we can release our fear to God, trusting that God is with us. These four steps are tools that Adam Hamilton's book gave, and I believe they're really useful in any stressful moments that we face in life. In order to be fully courageous, we need to discern what is holding us back, and then we need to trust God is walking alongside. A friend of mine recently asked me what my purpose is in life. She was really struggling with, how am I fulfilling my purpose when I am not pursuing the professional career I went to school for? After gentle reminders of how great she is at being a mom, a friend, and that her job that she has right now is the best job for her at this moment, we talked about what God's purpose is in our lifetime. This conversation led me to thinking more about my own purpose. I've always strived to live as God's hands and feet here on earth, by loving God and loving my neighbor. Though this song and this recent study I just did has reminded me that God calls us to take it one more step. God asks us to seek justice to love mercy and walk humbly with God, as the song sings in the refrain. This phrase comes from Micah 6, 8, which says, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah is one of our minor prophets in the Bible, and his purpose and calling was to warn the Israelites of their sins against God, sins like greed and taking other people's land, and corrupt leaders who are treating the people terribly. He calls them to repent and to know God is acting justly for good reasons. After spending a few chapters explaining God's good reasons, he then goes on to teach people how they can live differently. Micah's great concern was for the ordinary citizens who were oppressed and suffering due to the leaders. He prophesies by asking the question, what does the Lord require of you? And then he goes on to explain how to treat people better and how to strive to live according to God's purpose. To act justly all the time is hard. To live and to love com with compassion and forgive someone all the time is hard. And sometimes always walking humbly with God is hard too. However, no one ever said that our purpose in life or our journey in life would be easy. I knew from an early age that I wanted to be a mommy. It was a calling for me. But let me tell you, though if, you're already, if you are a parent, you probably already know this, it's not always easy. Some days you feel like, this isn't bad, this is going well. Yet other days, you just want to hit the restart button. Even though it isn't easy every day, even though it isn't easy every day, I wouldn't change it. I love being called mommy, and I love receiving hugs and kisses from my kids. And I want to live purposely in life. As I seek justice, love mercy, and walk with God as hard as it may be. 
So what does it really mean to act justly and to love mercy? I think Jesus is our great example of justice and mercy. Jesus stood up for the woman who was accused of adultery by showing the injustice of how calling her out, only calling her out. Jesus taught us to think wisely and not pick on our neighbor before attending to our own downfalls. Jesus sought justice for the lowly in society. He had compassion on the Syrophoenician woman who was a Gentile when she asked him to heal her daughter. Jesus healed so many people in whom society said was untouchable. Jesus forgave the thief on the cross out of compassion. Through all of his justly acts and compassion, Jesus also taught us how to love God. He taught us how to pray a priority, how to make prayer a priority by teaching us the Lord's Prayer. He modeled how to create space for love, a loving relationship with God. He showed us how God's love will never forsake us. Even death on a cross could not stop God's love for the whole world. Jesus still encourages us today through the work of the Holy Spirit who moves and lives within us, reminding us to seek justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God every day. As we go out today, how can you live more courageous in life? I invite you to take some moments later to think about that. What is your purpose in life? If you struggle with pinpointing your purpose, maybe take this under consideration. My purpose in life is to live strong and courageous by seeking justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God. How might your days look different in light of this purpose? May God bless your discernment and add even more meaning to your lives. Amen.